Hey, my name is Erica Steves, product stylist and commercial photographer. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to dive into today's video. Uh, almost two years ago, April 2020, I launched a video about pricing your time as a product photographer and I it was it's literally have been the best video I've created for this channel. And I've had a lot of questions and people engaging with it, asking questions, so I am going to come here today to do a follow-up on that video. So what are you waiting for? Let's get started on today. Remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. A new video will be launching every Tuesday where I take you behind the scenes, giving you commercial photography, tips and tricks, and so much more. Um, I've been having a lot of fun lately and last week I launched a vlog. I hope to do some more of these in the near future like I had said last week. Um, over a year ago I did a really big pivot in my business and I'm now like starting from the ground up and building a whole new platform for my studio and my business. So I want to take you guys along on that journey and some of the things that I'd love to know if you're interested and drop me a comment below is uh, if you want to know what equipment I invested in and which ones I invested in first, um, the steps that I'm taking on finding and building new clients and um, so many other really exciting things like uh, if you want to see the studio space that I'm working in now, uh, spoiler alert, I just kind of cleared a spot in my home office and have been able to do a lot of really great product photography um, going on location and just working in different ways and being resourceful has been so amazing for me. Anyway, um, let's get started on today's video about, it's an extension. If you haven't seen the first one yet, I'm gonna link it in the card up here. Uh, go check that out first. And second, I'm going to, this is an extension on that and I'm gonna elaborate on some of the things that you guys had questions about. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so one of the points that was kind of brought up and I understand where they're coming from. They were saying that um, the the last video, it, it didn't exactly say how to price your video, how to price your services. And you need to do that, you needed to get other steps. Um, like in general, they're like have pricing your, your photography, like pricing your services is very individual. And it has so much to do with what your overhead expenses are, your experience, um, what your own beliefs are around pricing and like what you you believe your your product photography is worth. So we're gonna dive into a little bit about that. So in the download that I was that I was suggesting you you go open up is there's a small equation. That equation is your labor plus materials, plus overhead is your break even point. So when you do your expenses for your business, it's gonna look different for everyone. The basic formula is how much time it takes, what materials you need to achieve that goal, and the overhead, your administration expenses to run your business. So that is your rent, your utilities, your uh, accounting software, if you have hire any team, your equipment, like there's so many variables and this is how you can see it's so different for everyone. This is literally just the break even point. So you need to be like really reflecting in your business and coming up with a simple like amount of how much it costs for you to work. Like this is the this is the bare minimum and then the second part of that formula is you need to take your break even and you times it usually by double to get your retail price and this is the profit margin so your profit margin is really going to be the point that you can look at developing your business you can look at um expanding, growing. It's the buffer that allows you to be able to, um, I don't know, like if something happens or if you have a slow month, it's your buffer to be able to get by and, and be a sustainable business. So these are, this is the bare, <laughs> this is the white and black of it. And I can't tell you to charge $500, $600, $150, Whatever it is, like these numbers you have to come up with for yourself. 
And when you can become more a scientist, a scientist about this approach and like have less emotional input towards it, you'll get a more realistic price. And sometimes you may have that question with yourself. So I, I'm doing this and for me to make money and for me to be able to support myself, I need to be making $5,000 a month. $3,000 a month, $2,000 a month. Every situation is different. Um, you can reverse engineer it and figure out how much you need to make a day. Um, I like to come from it from approach where I'm not like associating my time with the outcome of how much my goal is for a month. So I don't want to have it that, okay, I have to work five days a week, 40 hours, um, and working four weeks, like like you working Monday to Friday, like every single day, just photographing to be able to keep the roof over my head. I like to approach it where, you know, in a week I need to be shooting two days and then the rest of the week I'm gonna be managing projects. I'm gonna be looking for new, more leads or new clients. I'm gonna be developing my own content. I'm gonna be working on my business because all of that administrative stuff like has to happen sometime and that is part of the piece that is going to help make your business grow and uh, I think it's really important for you not to not lose sight that the pricing that you're doing needs to literally be replacing a nine to five where you're getting 2650 an hour like that is not, that's not the way. I want us to work smarter, not harder. And a lot of times I think when creatives get into the service industry and they want to sell products and stuff like this, they, they get bottled down with how much people are willing to pay, like based upon, like in comparison to like really large businesses. And as a small studio or a creative like you're offering a bespoke like the gourmet version um you know like you have that personal relationship that you're building with different people so the thing that you really need to do is like find ways to add added value to perceive that they're receiving more and in the last video i had touched base a little bit about how like in in a photo session i'm i'm say i'm charging just per photo and I'm able to photograph a lot of, a lot more photos, more a lot more than just four photos in one hour. And then I'm using that money, I'm using that time to get different angles and get different photos that I then try to sell to the client. Uh, there's different strategies on how you can give them more value, whether that's the additional images that you're capturing in that one hour you have the four that they're paying for, like that covers your expenses. But then the additional ones, maybe you're selling those at a discount so that you can make like more for that time. Or you're creating a little package instead of charging it per product photo, you could say, do you know what? Like uh, we work together all the time. I wanna make sure you, like I know you need a bank of images and you're looking for quantity of photos, not necessarily just like three or four very highly specific photos and concepts. What if we work at a deal where I'll just give you all of the usable images from set that day in a one hour shoot and the blanket price will be this. Um, I find that, I did tell you last time that I, I do do the per photo, but in recent years, that was two years ago, I've been playing around with the idea of changing the wording to attract smaller businesses so that they can have a bank of images to pull from. And um, I'm, I'm kind of like, like working between the two of like what I need to be making for it to be worthwhile for me to be on set versus the value that I'm adding to the client that they become repeat clients and then I'm building a relationship that it has like longevity. The The reality is, is you only need one or two really good clients to be able to subsidize your income if you're working a nine to five 
to be able to like, you know, like have a substantial business. So it's not a matter of having 20 or 30 or 100 little clients that you're managing and building relationships. It's like focusing on a few key ones and then growing from, from that point and adding and making really great selections that those people will align with your brand, they align with your aesthetic, they, they get your business, and you are an extension of their team. And I said, I like when I'm working and I'm talking with clients and, and networking with different ones, um, I really see like, like, whoa, like as a small business owner, uh, you know, like you're taking on so much. I see that you're doing your photographs. I see you like on social media behind the scenes that you're doing your photos too. Like um, I'm a photographer and it's something that I'm really passionate about. How can I help you just take that small little piece of the pie off of your plate so that you can focus on doing the things that you really love. Sometimes the case is, is that they really enjoy taking the photos and like, I'm happy, support that and like, wish you all the best. But a lot of times I say, hey, like, let me borrow a couple of products. I'll do a test photo shoot with you and I'll, I'll show you what, what I could do. And when they compare my photo, my test photos that I did for them, usually in a trial, I'll do a product photo and then I'll put it in a creative setting doing a simple and then also more of a lifestyle kind of concept. Um, and I'll just play with the, the, the product in a couple of creative ways just to like tease them a bit, you know, like you're just, you're fishing, you know? Uh, so I will, I'll take a couple photos and you can do a side by side with what they're taking and what they're doing and then where I'm able to take it. And so many times it doesn't have to be like an either or they can be like, Oh, like I never thought about like doing it in this way. And that's the expertise that you have as a product photographer to show them like, this is you're painting the possibility and bridging the gap of like what, what could be. Um, another really amazing thing is a lot of times you can put them side by side and say, hey, like you keep doing what you're doing and like, you know, creating content, engaging with your audience, uh, getting the word out there for your product. But on the side, I can also be helping as a contributor and feeding you like really high quality images so that you can ease off a little bit and not carry the burden and be able to have different systems in place so that, you know, like if you have a bad week or if something happens in your life, you have another system in place to make sure your, your business is successful. So that has been really helpful for me in having those conversations with new clients that I'm talking with and, uh, I hope that's really helpful for you. And if you have any comments or questions about any of the things that we're talking today, remember to drop them in the comment below. And if this is such a really popular topic and you want me to dive in even further, be sure to let me know, give me some love, give me a thumbs up, <laughs> subscribe to my channel. Uh, it'd be really helpful in 2022. I have some really big plans for this channel. And I hope that you guys can carry on the conversation with me. Okay, so, so far we covered about um, the hidden secret about what was in that <laughs> the link that you could go download and see uh, full transparency. Uh, it's just that simple formula, formula that, that I use to be able to get my prices. But something that you need to keep in mind is I'm stating in in writing or like in the email that I'm giving to them that all of these images are for digital use only. And there's so many, I create content with the, the idea that it's gonna be used primarily for social media and it's gonna have a life cycle of about 20 seconds. Um, if you use it more times than that, like that's amazing. Like use it as, as much as you can, love that for you, but there are like, you do not own the intellectual property for these images that I'm creating for you. And in Canada, there's different things that are in place for, um, for artists that kind of outlines all this. And as NFTs come out in the world, um, like ownership of intellectual property is even becoming more predominant. 
uh, something to keep in mind is like when you are using them like express the intent of what they're for um, I always indicate the resolution that they're going to be receiving it at and if they want something at a higher resolution than I'm, I'm delivering I usually do it at 2,000 pixels and like at the the longest edge is at 2,000 pixels the max at 3,000 and I'm doing it between 72 and 100 ppi so just to give you an idea like this is like a good amount for that they could use for uh for web use and digital use outside of that if they're asking me for something for print whether it be billboard magazine uh pamphlets and brochures things like this like i i give them the opportunity i say do you know what like i'm i'm photographing at this rate at this this quality you can use it for any of these but what i'm delivering for you is a digital is a digital file that's meant and you meant to be used and consumed in a digital format many times that's all people are looking for but you always get the one or two clients <laughs> or a few little people that come in and they they want they want to they have bigger aspirations or different projects in mind that they want help with and you need to do a few things for yourself one is you need to research what other people are charging so that you're not undercutting your immediate competitors Another thing you have to do is do a gut check. You have to say, what would I be willing to do this price at? Um, that it's worth my while, worth my time, worth the exposure. Like, how does that sit for me? And then another thing that you have to consider is like the longevity or the life cycle that this image is going to have. So if they're asking for something that's going to, or like how much editing needs to be put into it and things like this, I had done a billboard photo shoot, uh, I think it was around like two years ago or so. And in that, um, I had a price for additional editing that I would be needing for a format of that size. And I wrapped it in also with a price of like the usage of for a billboard. And that was an additional price outside of what I was charging for the, the equation that I came up with to do the photo shoot. Um, and that was a lot of like, you know, having to sit with myself, what feels good for me? Um, where am I at? How, how does that work? And again, it, it's really like, I could give you the formula of what that looks like, but at the end of the day, um, you have to do some of this legwork and research for yourself to know like what your experience, where you are in the market, in your geographic location, and what the project scope is. And uh, it it always gets really complicated. Um, something that I I never do is give the raw files to a client because this you are giving away your intellectual property. Like you have nothing really to stand on. When, when you don't have those raw files. There's been a few times that I have gotten to positions where I thought I communicated with the client completely of like what the scope of the project was. They didn't take it upon themselves to read through all of the fine print. And a lot of time it's those new clients, the ones that I've only worked with once or twice that they just like, they haven't, I haven't really fully aligned with them yet or like been able to get into a really good workflow and um they've come at me and been like well this is what i need uh i didn't know that i needed it when we were doing the photo shoot and now i need it so you know like there's always that conversation where you know like you deflate the scenario you bridge the gap and you give a solution but you're also not compromising like you know you're pointing back to the information that you shared with them saying that this is what we agreed to that i would be offering like that I'd be delivering for you in the the time frame and xyz and this is why I say like to list out in an email or print or um when you're you're in contact or like you're exchanging information with the client on my invoice in the description I write out exactly like what I'm, the deliverables are for the product that I'm delivering for the client and if there's any questions, like if they don't read it, like that's up to them 
to, you know, like when they make an agreement with somebody, whether it's verbal or nonverbal, um, if all the information is was shared with them and they were not receptive enough to to look at the details, like, you know, like to salvage the, the relationship, there's always like a compromise and a bridge that you can make. And by doing that, um, I, I try to meet them halfway and either I have like a strike policy like for first strike and then second strike like you know first strike I'll do it and you know like there will be like conversations if this ever comes up again where we're going to be working together to make sure that my boundaries are being seen but also I want to provide a service for this business and like do the best job I can so um I let them know and I'm reinforcing and I get a verbal confirmation that they understand the stipulations that I'm indicating. So I think like with NFTs and everything that's coming out with this, learning and knowing and understanding more about intellectual property is going to be really, really interesting. Um, I haven't quite yet dove into NFTs and if that's something that like you're professional at and have lots of information at uh drop your video below i'd love to see it and learn more from you this is a community it's an exchange of energy and information so uh let's keep on carrying the conversation drop me a comment below would super super be happy to hear from you but anyway for today i'm not sure if i have more to share i think i touched base on a couple of the questions that were had in the previous email or the previous video in the comments below um yeah anyway i this is something that i could just continually talking and ranting about i don't want to take up much more of your time i think i gave you some really great information about the formula on how to break down your pricing and then also some other insight for additional add-ons of like when the prices would be different um anyway until next week if you want to see that whole onboarding process you can grab it in the link below um, i still have it available for everybody to grab you'll get the email templates and, and i have a script when i'm talking on the phone to onboard new clients and many other great resources you can grab the whole thing in the link below anyway guys keep shooting having fun and can't wait to see you next tuesday Take care. Bye.